Hey everyone, I'm Zane and welcome or welcome back to Terra Token Witchery. So today's like a really exciting day. Um, I'm gonna be talking about the Zany Tarot, which is my new tarot that I just created using all sourced um, animation. And I collaged, manipulated, layered, um, recolored um, everything to fit my image and my interpretation of the tarot. So it's now available on Make Playing Cards, and the link for my online Make Playing Cards shop will be down below in the description. So if you uh, stay through this video and see my see the cards that I created and decide that you want to get a copy, you can click that link and it'll take you right there. The deck contains 80 cards, uh, the normal 78 that you would find in most uh, tarot decks, and then two bonus cards, one of which is an alternate sun card, which is a little more trippy and a little more toke witch um, inspired rather than um, more traditional RWS inspired. And then the final extra card is a deep purple um, blank card that's meant to be used as a scrying card or however else the reader would uh, wish to use it. Um, I love the color purple, and I have a deep connection to the stone amethyst, which is a stone that's good for um, intuition, and I use it a lot in my divinatory practices, so I wanted to use the color purple to represent amethyst in the scrying card. The main reason behind me wanting to create the zany tarot is because I am still uh, on my tarot learning journey, and even though it's been a long time that I've been on this journey, I have a trouble just I have trouble just memorizing meanings and definitions and putting them to cards and stuff like that. So I wanted to do something that would really like deepen and strengthen my connection to the cards and their meanings. And I figured what better way than creating my own tarot deck so I have my own connection to the symbolism in each of the cards and uh, the thought processes there behind each card to help me interpret and intuit um, in my readings. So yeah, that's the main reason that I wanted to do it. And I love animation. I've always been into sketching and drawing, but I wanted to really um, do something that's not in my typical wheelhouse, which is deal with, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Digital artwork. And I'm not well versed in creating digital artwork at this point. So I wanted to use all sourced artwork from a bunch of different um, creators who have made their artwork available for people to use to their um, heart's content, I guess. And so that's what I did. And the, like I said earlier, I um, layered, collaged, manipulated, recolored everything to create and build these scenes for each of the cards to really show my interpretation of each individual card in the deck. So with all of that being said, I'm going to flip my camera around and jump into flipping through all of these cards and kind of talking about the thought process that went into making each image. I don't know at this point if I'm going to do an in-depth description of every single card in the deck, but there's a good chance that I'm going to get talking because I just love these cards so much and I'm just going to go on and on. So there's a good chance it'll be an in-depth in -depth description of each of the cards. So I hope you enjoy and here we go. All right, so these are the backs. I have always felt a deep connection to the symbol of the triquatra because growing up as a young witch in America, Charmed uh, was my all-time favorite show, and to this day it still is. And I just, yeah, because of that, I always have had a connection to the symbol and the symbology of the triquatra, and I wanted to make sure to incorporate it into this deck. And when I first created this image, as soon as it was done and I saw it, I was like, yes, this is it. I have to keep this. This is the one I'm using for my backs. And I absolutely love how it turned out. And I think it looks great, like printed onto the cardstock. I just love how it turned out. So yeah, let's get to flipping through these cards. I'm actually going to flip the whole deck over because I didn't plan that out. Starting with the backs, I should have put them in reverse order so I could just flip them over, but I didn't. So here we go. Let me get that a little more centered. And yeah, this is the full. Um, so I wanted to depict 
kind of myself and my dog Sebastian. You may have seen him in a prior video on my channel. He is a Min Pin Chihuahua mix. So this is supposed to be a young version of Sebastian and a young version of me in the full card. Um, Sebastian wasn't in my life when I was young, obviously. He's only six years old now. But I wanted to show something that depicted me in my juvenile state when I was young and naive. You know, of course, the energy of the fool. And with there being a dog in the traditional imagery of the fool, I was like, I can't just pick any random dog. Of course, it has to be Sebastian, even though he wasn't with me back then. So, yeah, that's what... I took inspiration from for this full card and also you'll see down here there is a little bird and a nest in the tree and I wanted to show you know at the same time as the fool starting out on his journey here is a bird potentially leaving his nest for the first time also setting out on his journey so yeah next up of course is the magician one of my favorite cards in any deck as you can see, she has the traditional lemnus kit above her head. Also, she's holding her wand. And on the table in front of her, or altar if you will, you can see there is a dagger, a cup. And rather than just like throwing a random pentacle shaped object or a coin onto the table, you can see that the altar cloth is actually printed with the five-pointed star. Not necessarily enclosed in a circle, but enclosed nonetheless. And I just loved how that looked, so that's how I chose to um, show the symbol of each of the four suits. And she's standing in front of what looks like a portal to the universe, because of course, you know, the universe is at the magician's exposal or disposal can't even talk. It's at the Magician's Disposal with um, Powers of Manifestation. And yeah, so next we have the High Priestess with her eyes closed, showing that she's looking within, looking into her intuition, even though she has the book of all her secrets right in front of her. She doesn't need that book. She's got it all inside her head because the book is just an extension of her and her intuition and thoughts. She's got the traditional uh, pillars behind her but of course because she's outside and in the woods under the moon it is trees with the traditional b and j got the little pomegranates off to the side here of course some traditional symbology thrown in there and yeah she just looks majestic and i love everything about her next is the empress of course um, and I always see the Empress card. I know some people have an issue with the Empress card. I don't really know why personally, because I love the Empress card. I always interpret, I know she's meant to be an Empress, counterpart to the Emperor, obviously, but I always see the Empress card as more of the Goddess card, the Divine Feminine, if you will, if you subscribe to things like, you know, traditional masculinity and femininity, which, you know, I typically don't, but for the, um, when I'm talking about tarot, I tend to use the words Divine Masculine and Divine Feminine because most people understand what you mean when you say it that way. But I always see the Empress as more of the Goddess card, like I said, and she just embodies that earthly goddess-like energy out in nature, under the stars, uh, communing with nature and everything around her and just dancing in her power and dancing under the moonlight and the stars. Next up is the Emperor, and you don't typically see the Emperor depicted in a fatherly role. A lot of times you'll see the Empress depicted as pregnant or a motherly figure, but then you see the hard side of the Emperor himself. And I wanted to do a little juxtaposition to that because, you know, the Emperor does symbolize that fatherly energy where the Empress is the more maternal energy. And I wanted to really show, you know, the Emperor doesn't always have to be a hard ass ready to go into battle. He's also the father who is raising a child and taking care of him and protecting him and teaching him how to grow up to be a responsible human. Next is the Hierophant. And I know that this imagery might um, turn a lot of people off like right away seeing it because it is a depiction of Jesus as the Hierophant. 
but I have a very complicated history with organized religion. Um, it was never forced upon me growing up because my mom is not a religious person, but a lot of her side of the family um, is religious, was religious, like my grandparents before they passed, um, my grandma more specifically, not so much my grandpa. Um, but I really have come to terms with that over the years, and I kind of don't necessarily not believe in Jesus. I believe that there's a very good chance that he was real, but not to the not necessarily in the way that history has recorded him. I like to think of Jesus as maybe one of the early witches, which is how I wanted to show him in this card. You see, he has the key of knowledge to unlock um, the knowledge of the universe above his head as always. Well, not always, but you know, traditional symbology in the tarot. And if you see this book above his head, you can see that one side has a cross and the other side has a pentacle. And I wanted to show, you know, like, Jesus being like an early witch, he's, yes, there is that religious connotation to him, but also that witchy energy. Next up is the lovers. And I think this one's pretty self-explanatory, you know, two individuals at an LGBTQIA plus pride parade. Um, we have the non-binary flag behind them. And we have several other individuals in the background with different flags showing their pride. And, you know, just love is love. So, of course, I had to depict queerness in the lover's card because I don't know if I'll ever put out a deck that doesn't have queerness in the lover's card. Next is the chariot. And I absolutely love this image because I love all things mermaids, mermen, under the sea. And I... Yeah, just love this image of, you know, you could say it's Poseidon or just any fictional king of the sea that you want to see him as being pulled by two quote unquote seahorses, you know, obviously a little <laughs> more like literal land horses with tails attached to their back ends. But um, yeah, you can see I collaged like the bubbles behind him to look like, you know, they're moving swiftly, the whale in the background. Um, there's just, I don't want to get into all of the reasons that I use every single piece of symbology or artwork in the cards, like the whale, because I want people to be able to really, like, use their intuition and draw their own meanings from the cards. I know Chris from Elemental Cardomancy, he's the only other person that has this deck at the exact moment that I'm filming this, because, as I've mentioned before, he really helped me throughout the process of this just really being my sounding board and being so supportive and helping me with different things that I have questions about. Like, do you think I should use this or this, um, this coloration, um, all that kind of stuff. And I know he's already pulled so much meaning out of the symbology in the cards, which is what I really want because yes, there is meaning behind everything in the cards, but you know, different people might see it in different ways. And of course, if there's ever an image, if you decide you want the deck, but there's just that one card that you don't understand or anything like that, feel free to drop a comment on this video and ask me about it. And I will gladly tell you like what my personal reason for putting that imagery in the card was. But yeah, like I said, I don't want to go super, super in depth in every single card because I want there to be room for interpretation and room for people to make their own connections to these cards and the symbology in them. The strength card, this one's pretty straightforward, of course. This strong ass woman, not a care in the world she's next to this ferocious lion, but that lion knows that this woman is a goddess and not to fuck with her. At the same time, she respects the animals and the earth and knows not to fuck with the lion. And they are just in harmony, showing off their strength and badassery. Next, we have the Hermit, and I just love this card. You know, the Hermit is all about self-reflection, introspection, looking f within yourself for, you know, the answers to life, if you will. And he's out on his own journey, just kind of like the Fool is. And obviously older and more mature, more experienced, but still on that journey, seeking knowledge, but looking more inside rather than um, searching for the answers out in the world, like, you know, the fool. 
would be. He's got his staff, which would traditionally be a lamp, you know, to light his way. But I wanted, you know, something a little different. And, you know, growing up, I was a little bit of a pyro. I love fire. So had to, you know, he's carrying a staff that's lit with magic. You know, there's obviously nothing there keeping that flame lit, if you look closely. Nothing but his magic. Next is the Wheel of Fortune. I have a lot of, um, not issues, I have a really hard time connecting to traditional artwork for the Wheel of Fortune and just a lot of depictions of the Wheel of Fortune card index. I don't know why, I've just never really connected with them, but I have a huge connection to the moon and the energy and power of the moon. So I thought, what better way to depict the Wheel of Fortune and, you know, that cyclical energy than the moon phases and the cycle of the moon. So that's what I wanted to show. It's pretty straightforward, a pretty, um, I don't want to say basic card, but basic, if you will. Um, next is one of my favorite cards in the deck. This is the Justice card. Um, and before anybody clocks me, you will see that, you know, obviously I wanted to get a little political with my deck because any opportunity I have to, you know, use my voice to show my support for the Black Lives Matter movement, people of color, um, the queer community, everyone. Um, but especially in these times and with what everything that has happened in the past year, obviously it's been going on for hundreds of years, but, you know, America really got a wake-up call within the last year, um, especially when it comes to um, being Black or being a person of color in America and, you know, people not valuing their lives as equal to that of the white man, if you will, which... I could go on and on about how gross that kind of mindset is, but I'm not going to because we're here for the deck. But you can see this is, um, what's depicted here is a Black Lives Matter movement um, protest, if you will. And there are, you know, I had to, of course, include, you know, two very important names from the movement this past year. Um, the names of two Black individuals who tragically were killed by um, police officers in America. You see up here it says, say his name, and then George Floyd. And down here, justice for Brianna, um, who of course is Brianna Taylor. And this is what I was talking about earlier when I said before you clock me. I know that there is a spelling error on here and it is mortifying to me that of course the one thing in the first copy of the deck that was misspelled was um, Brianna Taylor's first name. Um, but it was, as soon as I got the hard copy of the deck and looked at it, I saw it and was like, nope, oh my gosh, that is so wrong. I cannot believe I missed that before I submitted, um, the first copy of the deck for printing. So, um, all the decks that, any decks that are purchased, um, now, of course, will be fixed and have the proper spelling of her name without the Y in the middle, because I don't know where that Y came from in my mind. But, like I said, as soon as I saw the hard copy of the card, I was like, wait, what? Did I really type it that way? So, yeah. Um, but, so please overlook that for now, because, like I said, that is fixed and will not be in any of the decks that are received if you do so choose to purchase this deck. And, yeah, um, just the overall energy of this card, I really wanted to show, you know, that in America, especially right now, well, I shouldn't say especially because, you know, that's just my everyday life is here in America. So for me, especially, you know, in America, but everywhere in the world, you know, just there's so much political, I can't even say political. There's just so much unrest because of people not being treated as humans, as equal humans. We're all equal humans. And I just really wanted to show, you know, that there can really be no peace without justice for all of these people who have been just marginalized and oppressed through, you know, systemic and systematic racism in America. And I really just, I'm having trouble getting my words across because I'm not trying to make this video political, but I can't show this card and not talk about my motivation 
behind the imagery. I may not be explaining it the best right now because I didn't really think ahead when doing this flip through of having to, you know, dive into all of the deep topics that are maybe expressed in some of these cards. But yeah, I just really hope that people get what my intention was with this card because there's still a lot of work to be done in America and across the world, like I said, um, when it comes to equality and human rights, because that's what it comes down to at the end of the day is basic human rights. You know, everybody needs to have the opportunities that everybody else has. There should be no, this group of people starts off already ahead of this group of people merely because of the color of their skin and the fact that the laws in our country, you know, were written for the white man. I'm not even going to say the white person because the white man, as a white man, I have no problem saying that because it's true. The laws in this country and a lot of countries cater to the white man, the straight cisgendered white man in America. And I'm over it. And I know a lot of people are over it and it's about damn time. Sorry, I am just, I so much more I could say and I'm just not gonna do it right now because this is not the video for that. But stay tuned because maybe I'll make a video on that. All right, next up is the Hanged Man. This one's pretty straightforward when it comes to traditional symbology of the Hanged Man. You can see he is in upside down tree pose. And I didn't even think about this, honestly, but ironically hanging from a tree <laughs> in tree pose. Um, serene, you can see, you know, the traditional calm look on the hermit, the hermit, on the hanged man's face. Um, I wanted to do, you know, I had this random idea that just popped into my head, a quirky little thing as an homage to, you know, the hanged man being hung upside down. Of course, you know, that word hanged down here is upside down as if it's been hung. And yeah, so like I said, that one's pretty straightforward. Next is the death card. And I know I created all these cards and I don't want to come across, you know, like I'm talking myself up or anything because I'm not, that's not what I'm doing, but I love this death card. I'm just going to say it. Um, and of course, you know, death symbolizes a big change, um, death and rebirth, you know, the start of something new. So you have, you know, death with his sickle. And, you know, standing on a bed of skulls, you know, showing like the literal death aspect of the death card. But at the same time, from underneath those skulls and from the death, from death himself is springing life, the tree. Um, yeah, so I really just wanted to show that aspect of death and rebirth or death and new life, you know, that balance, if you will. You can't have one without the other. All right, next up is Temperance. Also, I'd say a pretty straightforward one, you know, a little bit of traditional symbology with the pouring of the water from one vessel into another. Um, but another individual in tree pose, this one being an angel, a little bit, another little throwback or reference to traditional RWS. And you can see, I'm hoping you can see in the lighting. Yeah, you can. Um, the card is split directly down the middle into two different colors and the individual and the vessel are placed as central as possible to, you know, show that kind of middle path because, you know, temperance is all about balance um, and taking that middle path. Yeah. Next up, we have the devil and I love all things like horror related, sci-fi related, and I love the story or the legend of Krampus or Krampus, if you will, um, from German lore. Um, in place of Santa Claus, you know, he comes down the chimney and beats bad kids with switches, aka sticks. And I was like, what better way to depict the devil than Krampus? And, of course, you know, he's got the traditional two figures, you know, some scantily clad men because, you know, it's not a Zane deck without some <laughs> scantily clad men in it or some, I don't know, just little lusty images. Next, we have the tower. 
Um, and this one, I love this because it's, at least I think so, completely out of the box compared to a lot of other tower cards. Um, originally, when I was thinking of what I wanted to depict in the tower card, for some reason, I don't know if it's my intuition, just or spirit, you know, chiming in or what, but something just popped into my head. I was like, I want a fish tank and I can make it look like it's cracking and the water's coming out. And, you know, just really get that sense of, you know, if this is left as it is, the cracks are going to spread and the pressure from the water is just going to burst this glass and that's going to be the end of it. And then I found the image of this light bulb with these fish inside and I was like, I love it. So, of course, um, as I said before, I altered all of these images, added to, collaged, um, layered, so... I put cracks in the glass and droplets of water coming out to show that, you know, this is dire, this is about to happen, you know, the water is about to pressure this glass into breaking, and the traditional symbol of the lightning in the tower card, I was like, this is perfect, because, you know, light bulb, I can show, um, like, a spark going into the bottom to symbolize the lightning, the swiftness, because, you know, the tower is all about swift and unexpected change. So, yeah. Next up, the star card. Um, all about faith and, you know, hope and looking forward to an, um, better times. And I really wanted to show that here. You know, she's got that kind of, not necessarily, like, sad look to her face or anything, but just kind of that indifferent, like, things could go either way kind of look to her face. But if you see her hair turning into the water droplets and raining down and starting new life, starting something fresh, you know, hope for the future, you know, being born of that, um, again, I don't want to say sadness, but just being born of, I guess I can say sadness, born of, you know, the tower card that comes before the start, you know, after all that misery and all those tears, if you will, you know, because that's what these looked like to me when I was creating this image, is tears you get new life springing up and hope for something new and something better. You know, greener pastures, if you will. All right, next we have the moon card. This one's pretty straightforward. I absolutely love the moon card. Like I said before, I have always had a connection to the moon and moon energy. And I've also always just loved um, the imagery of mushrooms and, you know, their... Um, their use as symbology to show like magic and mysticism a lot of times in storybooks and stuff like that and of course I couldn't have the moon card um this was actually inspired by the moon card from my favorite moon card from any tarot deck which is the moon card in the spacious tarot um which pretty much depicts mushrooms under the moon and that's what I took direct inspiration from for this card Next up, we have our Sun card. Like I said, at the end of the deck, there will be two, the two extra cards. So you'll see the extra Sun card that you can replace this one with if you so choose. But this one's a little bit more traditional. You know, a kid out playing in the sun, flying his kite, you know, showing the joy that the Sun card represents. Um, next up, Judgment. Um, you know, we have the traditional angel up in the sky playing his trumpet. I think that's a trumpet. I'm going with trumpet. <laughs> and we have some zombie hands busting up through the ground because, you know, it's all about that um, resurgence, that coming back to life, that reawakening, um, resurrection, if you will. So, yeah. Next up, the world card, this beautiful, voluptuous woman of color, of course, um... I just felt drawn that that's the imagery, that's the individual that needed to be depicted in this card. And in each of the four corners, you'll see a mystical creature. Um, to symbolize each of the four elements, we have a fairy up here for air, a phoenix for fire, a gnome for earth, and of course a mermaid for water. All right, and the way this deck is, uh, the way the miners are placed in this deck is the way that I created them, which was um, each card 
um, like each of the aces from each suit, then each of the twos from each suit, then all of the threes. It's not one suit all the way through, then the next suit all the way through. So just wanted to give you a heads up that that is how I have this ordered. So you'll see all of the aces, all of the twos, all of the threes, all of the fours, and so on in that order. So first up, um, we have the Ace of Wands. And you know what? I think I might just, for the minors, just flip through them and let you just take in the imagery because otherwise this video is going to be so long <laughs> because I'm just babbling on about each card. So, okay, like I said, I'll start over with the aces and we'll just flip through the rest of these cards. Here we go. I will say something um, on this card. Um, I just really wanted to make sure that this deck was as inclusive as possible, especially because you know I was using found artwork, artwork that had already been created and collaging it together to create these scenes to represent um, my interpretation of the tarot, like I said. And yeah, it was just really important for me to show inclusivity and show all aspects of human life, or at least as many as I was able to find artwork to depict. So I just love this image um, of an, a differently abled athlete being the Six of Wands um, and showing that victory and strength um, and just overcoming everything to get to where she is.
So that was the Zany Tarot. I'm so excited that this is now out there for the world to see. And I know a lot of people have already ordered the cards and they're um, hopefully on their way to them now. And hopefully a lot of people will have them within this week, um, which is totally crazy to think about. And thank you again to everybody who's been so supportive from this community. Um, the outpouring of love has just been incredible. And it makes me so happy that so many people have already connected um, just through seeing images online that I've showed or through um, live video chats, a couple of the images that I showed. Um, everybody's just been so supportive and been loving the artwork and have had nothing but kind words. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And yeah, so with that, I am going to end this video. Thank you so much for staying and checking out the deck. And please feel, like I said, please leave comments. I love feedback um, as long as it's respectful and all of that respectful of me, respectful of other people down in the comments. Please feel free. Any criticism you have, as long as it's, again, respectful, is welcome. So um, with that, I will say goodbye for now, everybody. Peace, love, and pride.